walking walking down the street and uh, they had a bunch of baby ducks and everyone's like taking pictures Aww. and it was so cute and i'm like i was like that's just bad parenting they're in a major street right now like that's, yeah that's, bad parenting what's that bad parenting and then uh i <laughs> I, t- I told them, I was like, yeah, take pictures. Those ducks aren't going to be around for very long. <laughs> the girls were like, that's so mean. I'm like, there's dumb people. There's dumb animals, too. I mean, we all have different levels of cognitive, like, <laughs> abilities, you know? So it's, they, were, they were like, you're so, don't say that out loud. And I'll, they'll put that energy out there. I'm like, I'm sorry, guys. Like, those ducks, they're not going to have, <laughs> they're not going to make it. Like, they're, right, they're on a highway right now. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> there is this one breed of like a a bird that uh, almost like a it might be some sw- like similar to an ostrich or it might be an ostrich but a different like relative of it and its defense mechanism when it's threatened is to stick its head in the sand. Oh, and really? that's it. It's almost like if it can't see the threat, then it doesn't exist. Now that's dumb. Wow. That's like that's how how is this animal still? I wonder. Living. If, I wonder. Like, if, like other animals are like, uh, maybe this is something, this is a trap. I don't know. I mean, I don't That's know. a defense mechanism, huh? Yeah, huh? Just, just wow. Like, I, I don't see anything. It's not happening. <laughs> that's, that's, huh. That's like a kid under the blankets or something, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't see me down. That's funny. Uh, that's not your defense mechanism because you fought crime today. <laughs> sure. Ashley fought crime. So, okay, guys, I know we're starting on a weird note here. I guess we're starting. I guess we're just starting this. <laughs> is it recording? I guess so. Oh, it's been recording. I guess oh. we're recording. All right, Ashley stopped crime today because Sam <laughs> kept leaving her bike outside. Did you know this, Arthur? So she kept leaving her bike outside of the gym, and I was like, Sam, bring your bike inside. Like She's like, oh, I want to bring it in. It brings in, like, dirt and She's always like super concerned with, you know, like getting in the things getting in the way. I'm like, Sam, someone's going to steal your bike eventually if you just leave it out there unlocked against the wall. Like, I'm like, it's not even the area. It's just America, period, you know? And um, I heard all this commotion and I was in the office and then I checked the cameras and Ashley's, someone, someone like touched the bike and then Ashley. Oh, no, he's more than touching it. He was like about to, he was. He was about to to board it. He was about. mm, Yeah, Yeah, she stopped crying. I heard all this commotion and I was like, what's going on out there? (laughs) Ashley stopped crying. I you know I you know that those instincts kicked in. Not all heroes wear capes, Ashley. Exactly. I get I get um that's assertive Ashley. That was or a, it's a rarity. It is a rarity, but it's <laughs> fun to see. It's fun to see. Good job. You know. You so. saved you saved a bike today. Yeah, you know. I do what I can around here. <laughs> well, it's a funny. It's a, people have that fight or flight, right? You fought. Yeah, you like, I, you know, you you find out a lot about people in those moments. Like is she actually what would she do? You know, is she yeah. a fighter? Like some girls would just be afraid to say anything so they'd be like oh he's still on the bike and they would just freeze up but you were yeah. like didn't think twice and you ran out yeah oh, yeah i grabbed that bad boy i brought back in like, <laughs> that's the pretty, guys yeah that was that's, that's an instinctual thing that's that's yeah. good i you, mean i i don't i don't ever think i let people walk over me no. or anything like that but i don't go out of my way to look for trouble that's for sure yeah i stand up for myself or at least i try to but i think but. if you were a duck you wouldn't walk your ducklings down a no highway. i sure wouldn't I think that you would be smarter than that instinctual your instincts are showing me I that i would order an uber you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> i wish i had a pun for that i thought of i was like what goes with the uber that's a duck like related but i couldn't that was yeah. all right with that that actually puts us in a good transition of uh navigating negativity which was our topic today yes just because the navigation part of it yeah there we go it's uh it's almost like the same thing it's pretty much the same yeah. thing <laughs> <laughs> this is random random but it's fun yeah. i like the new openings more you know ever since i said stop saying we've got a great podcast episode for you today uh, they've just they completely went in the other direction they went in a totally different yeah <laughs> i don't know if you guys are enjoying it more but i am and that's what matters yeah i honestly didn't think we were recording i knew this was going but i didn't yeah. know we were recording for the past nine minutes yeah i was like shoot i hope i didn't say anything embarrassing let's see how much i uh get no this was it oh no we're good now <laughs> Let's see how much hate I get for the polar bear. The polar bear. I don't know if that was on there. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you're just stating facts, bro. You're stating facts. Yeah. Stating facts. Polar bears just need to step back 100 feet, and they won't be drowning in the water. That's why, why does anyone saved, think about that? You just it's just saved humanity. But why isn't anyone that? thinking about that? Because it's not like it's just water up there. Yeah, I don't know. I like everyone's like freaking out that they're melting. I'm like, yeah, but they're still there. Like, yeah, maybe there's 100 yards less of them, but they're still there. There's still land for them to walk on. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of unused land in, you know. Yeah, (laughs) like like here's a hundred bucks, go save the melt, go save the ice caps for me, sure. (laughs) Yeah, tell me how that works. Stop using hairspray (laughs) outside. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Give me me your money, I'll save the planet. Okay, sure, guy. So anyway, (laughs) anyway, today's podcast, we're talking about navigating negativity, which is huge in our, huge in our industry. 
huge everywhere, but yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> it's huge everywhere. But I think especially with with um, with the competition world because of every it's so foreign and so extreme and so different to everyone's regular life. Like people who are you you, you know hear the things like eat a hamburger, you know, eat a cheeseburger, you know, like yeah, so original, yeah, so original. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> that's probably my number one thing I hate the most is when someone like, says eat a, eat a cheeseburger, and you then you see what they look like, and you're like, yeah, eat a salad. Maybe <laughs> not going to take nutritional advice from you like yeah. what the heck yeah. is it? yeah that one's just like i gotta roll my eyes to that it's just like okay yeah because this one random dude commented to eat a, a burger now i'm gonna, gonna go eat a burger now yeah, I love, that's thank your, you the best argument is when you say because you, you can't say eat a salad but they can say eat a cheeseburger right that's a whole other thing but yeah i think the the important one is on this is dealing with you know friends and family that have impact on your life and they're trying to get you to not compete um they're trying to get you out of the zone, you know, but not, not for bad reason. They just, because to them, it seems like it's, you're, you're really struggling in your life and you're choosing this, which is a burden on your life and not a benefit on your life, but they just don't see it from your, right. from your side. You yeah. Know? Yeah. They just make you feel kind of weird about it and make you second guess what you're doing, you know? And, um, you know, I think we've all been through it. Um, so I think we can all kind of relate to what's going to be said in this podcast, you know, cause I think if it's not, happening currently to somebody it, it will and yeah or it has in the past so definitely something you gotta you know push through mentally because it can get to you it sure can especially if it's coming from somebody that you care about not just some random troll on the internet but somebody you actually like care about in real life you know yeah i think you know what we need to do too i don't want to give you real quick advice on the random trolls on the internet too because the random troll this is what really does get me get me Sad. And I've heard this happen so many times. I'll see a, a girl post a picture. It'll be an awesome picture, you know, whatever. One of the standard Instagram pictures where a girl's, you know, doing the booty shot in the mirror at the gym or something like that. And you'll have a hundred comments that are like, oh, you look great. No, no, no. All these supportive comments. And you'll have one troll with like a private account or maybe someone you've met one time. I don't know. And the, But the girl will only focus on that one negative comment. Okay, so my tip is this. If you have, my tip is, and this is what I do, and if you've been blocked, then sorry, I'm, you're not getting unblocked. <laughs> if anyone ever leaves any negative comment ever, I just ignore and block. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like, because I feel like my social media, at least mine, is, is educational. I put a lot of effort out. You know, I'm with Arthur a couple days a week trying to put something new out to, like, educate and help and, and contribute to their learning. And so to me, I'm like, if you follow my social media, I feel like you're going to benefit from it. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like it's a plus in your life. So if you're, if you're going to add any negativity to my life when I'm trying to do good for the world, you know, kind of thing through fitness, then no, you don't get access to it anymore. Like and it's, and I don't care if you say, Oh, he blocked me. Like that was your fault. You know yeah. what I mean? So any, and any, and I feel like that's the same for anyone. If, you, if anyone's bringing negativity into your life, like if it's a troll, someone you don't know, whatever, just block them, ignore it and block them. Cause they're just one. I feel bad for those people. Mm -hmm. Because I can't imagine, can you imagine that you're in this place in life where you bringing negativity to someone brings you joy, brings you joy or satisfaction or just, yeah. What a sad individual I can, that is. I mean, can you ever picture like a super successful person going out of their way to like comment on a random person's like account, something negative, right? It's one thing if you know the person or you're giving them criticism, but like, just, I, I could never picture even myself, like just going to somebody's picture and just writing something rude, like you should try eating more salads or something. <laughs> you know, I could never like that just may, would that's really it's embarrassing, like yeah. on the person that it's like, what kind of life you, you live in, man? You, you must be really sad. Yeah, Shoot. It, it's, a, it's a sad thing. Like, it's almost like I feel bad for them. I'm like, dude, I wish, I hope you, I hope your life gets a little better, yeah, man, where exactly. that doesn't bring you joy or you have more time on, you have less time available where you wouldn't even have time to do this anymore. Yeah. Like you're more productive with your life, you know? So yeah, just know that if someone's commenting on that first, I mean, that's just the easiest way of doing things. Just, just block and move on. And the other thing I think that's important to, to remember is that whenever you're doing good things, whenever you're doing big things, as soon as your name starts getting kind of known, you know, um, what, one thing I've said is, you know, cause as I've gotten more out there and more known, whatever, 
you get more you get more negative. You'll get because it just goes equally. The people, the more people like you, more people hate you. It's just it's just the way it is. So I've always said, you know, if people aren't when people aren't talking about me, that's when the problem starts. Mm-hmm. Like that's when the real problem starts. Yeah. So um, yeah, you might have only a hundred people following you, and one person doesn't like you. We'll have a hundred thousand people like you and then you'll have a thousand people right. not like you You know it's the same like the same percentage all the way up so just know that that comes with the territory as you're growing as you're doing great things in your life um you know people see that and they're kind of kind of either jealous or even threatened by it you know mm-hmm. and they're gonna sometimes not be the most supportive but right. but i think the first the first subject we're going into is uh this like the family and friends because you yeah. you've been pretty good you're mm-hmm. you've been pretty i mean is it because I, I guess at this stage, you've just surrounded yourself with the right people? Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, you know, we have parents that are a little, like, concerned, like, Ashley, you know, you don't need to compete, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, you know. And then, of course, uh, with the boyfriend, too, um, you know, he's, he's accepted that this is my life. And, uh, you know, I'm not living for anyone else but myself. I'm not going to... Uh, stop doing what I love just for someone else. And if they don't like it, then I don't need them in my life. And it's like a test, like, okay, well then leave me then if you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> and he hasn't left. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm really, I put my foot down when it comes to that. Cause nobody, nobody is going to tell me I shouldn't compete or is going to talk me into not competing as much or whatever, whether that be my family, friends or random competitors on the internet. <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to convince me not to compete. Like, if I decide not to compete, it's on my own uh, decision, not not because I was uh, bullied into it or tried to uh, convince not to do it. You know. Yeah. Well, how did how did that um, nav- how did you navigate that? Like at first, because I, I think there's people out there that are struggling with that now. Like they're in fights with their boyfriends, mm-hmm. their first show, whatever, their tenth show, whatever it is, and it's like it's a huge inconvenience to the boyfriend. And that's what he sees. You know, he's like, right. we're not going out to dinner anymore. You're too tired to, to go out. Like we're not drinking with our friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like how did, how did that go? With yeah. I mean, in the beginning, you know, it was a little tough because you try to accommodate to everyone and try to make everyone in your life happy, you know? Um, but I think like, as I've gotten a little older, I'm just like, I don't need you. If you don't like it, don't be my friend. Leave me. I don't care. Like whatever. That's your, that's your decision. And I'm moving on. And I've, I'm really, how do I put this? I'm really good at just dropping it all together. Just like, I don't need you. Bye. (laughs) Whether that be like a friend or whatever, um, or just random, um, acquaintances, like you don't exist to me anymore, whatever. Like if it comes to that point, I will always choose my happiness and what I feel makes me happy rather than trying to make somebody else happy when I'm not directly affecting their life in such a negative way. You know, it's not like me competing is going to drastically affect them so badly that they can't live a day-to-day life in a happy way. Does that make sense? Like, I get that it can be a little inconvenient for the other person. Like, oh, we can't go out to eat on Saturdays and have beer or whatever. You know, I get that part, but that's not, like, that shouldn't be a make or break with somebody in your relationship, right? Whether that be a friend or or family, or boyfriend, or girlfriend, shouldn't be make a break, okay? Yeah. So they, they can either deal with it, or I don't know, I, I don't want to give bad advice, but knowing me, I'd just be like, okay, bye. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> See you later. So what, uh, so, so what would I'm you, very harsh when it yeah, comes you to are, that. Yeah, you are. You're just, yeah, that's good. That's good, I'm because you kind of say, I think that's where people get themselves. In I the, draw the line, for sure. I think it's where people get themselves into problems, is when they're trying so hard to accommodate that they end up, sacrificing what their true goal is and right. you know like okay well maybe i'll just have one drink or maybe i'll go out and whatever and like I, I think there's a compromise there i think the compromise is you could still go out to dinner while prepping that's not hard to yeah, do totally i mean it's like especially these days it's so much easier right. you know and and why would why would the other person care if you had like um chicken and vegetable meal rather than like a burger meal how does that affect that other person so yeah, much exactly you yeah. know or or even with when it comes to like alcohol too like why you can have a drink go ahead i'm not stopping you go for yeah. it but why why does it make that why does it affect your happiness that i'm having a different meal than you like big deal yeah it's about the time spent with each other right not about what's going into the other person's taste buds you can't even taste it like <laughs> if it's somebody else's food you can't even taste it like yeah, no, I agree with that. And I think that that's where like a lot of the compromise is, is that you, you know, you just find a restaurant that's you guys can both do and you still do that. And if they want to go out and drink, you just, you know, you're just there you hanging can, out. I don't think there's drive them. Whatever. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> I've never understood why prep is so 
like I'll hear about these girls who do this stuff too. And I'll hear about them and they're like, yeah, well, I don't, I'll, you know, like they change their whole lives for prep. And I'm like, prep really isn't that much, shouldn't be that drastic of a change. Like if it's that drastic of a change and you're not doing your off seasons, right. You know, then like if you're like, I get, you might have some drinks, a little bit more looseness on your diet in the off seasons and stuff, but it shouldn't be this dramatic change where it's impacting the life of everyone around you so much more anyway. Like, for example, okay, you are working out for an hour a day in the gym, w- lifting weights. Okay, well, now you're in prep. So you're lifting for an hour of day <laughs> in the gym, lifting weights. Okay, so you were doing 20 minutes of cardio four days a week in your off season. Okay, so now that changes. You're going to be doing, let's say, 45 minutes of cardio. So we're talking the difference is, you know, 25 minutes of cardio. That's the big thing. And now you're eating cleaner and you're not eating, you're not having the looseness on your diet. That's That should be, I mean, am I missing something? What's the huge difference of someone who's living the fitness lifestyle versus a prep lifestyle. It's the, a little bit more cardio and eating a little bit cleaner, right? Am I missing anything? <laughs> Maybe a little contest prep cranky sometimes. I yeah. Know. I mean, I guess the crankies, the crankies. <laughs> but hey, yeah. if you are cranking to your partner over the top, that is your fault and you can, you can manage that a little better, but yeah. <laughs> you got to work on that for yourself. That is one thing, but don't blame it on prep. That's a you <laughs> thing, you know? Yeah, I it, think I'm pretty pleasant. Thank you very much. Yeah, you do. Thank pretty- you very much. <laughs> yeah. She's a I'm week. the nicest she's, person ever. She's a week out. She's a week you out. Give her, give her that. <laughs> no, I, I don't think my mood changes that much. No. No, I mean, maybe some days I'll be a little little tired, but I don't think I'm, I, th- I think like I've, you know, I've learned to control crankies. So I just get quiet sometimes. I, li- I, li- <laughs> I like that new term. You've been using it lately. Crankies. What? Contest, Contest cranky. prep crankies. Contest yeah. crankies. <laughs> It's like a, it's a, it's a medical term. It's going to be, it's going to be in the, whatever they call that, that book. Yeah. Super (laughs) scientific, you know? (laughs) Yeah. So now obviously, okay. So you have the conversation with the boyfriend, you, you, you negotiate a dinner a week or something, right? I think that that's, you know, totally doable. Yeah. I don't feel like there's anything that's not doable. I think it's just a matter of putting out that effort, you know, and I've, and I've had, you know, uh, girls where I've dated where they even brought like Tupperware to restaurants. I didn't care. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm never going to go that far. Yeah. I mean, I personally just didn't care. I'm like, <laughs> whatever, we're still going out. And they're like, but, but what they would, what, how, how it usually worked when they did that was they would bring their own like meat and then they would just get a salad and then mm-hmm. they'd put it on the salad. That's like mm-hmm. a normal, I've seen that happen a few times. Yeah. So I'm like, ah, whatever, Sounds I don't care. I just never cared. I don't know. I just, yeah. I never cared. Personally. I mean, you live the life and I think everyone understands it. I mean, thank goodness we have friends that are very aware of like what we do yeah. but you know it's kind of that's where you get the best friends right yeah that's where that's where i made a lot of my um you know friends and everything just through competing because we're on the same level you know we get it we get it yeah yeah for sure so anyway okay now along with that so along with the negativity of the boyfriends and whatnot so the crankies you have to manage that's what we say that that's a competitor's thing right mm-hmm. they have to manage that we have to understand that it's not that it shouldn't be this huge lifestyle change where you're changing everything around for the whole like for the whole family everything gets totally different um the negativity of the boyfriend of you doing i guess what else comes with that i guess you know sometimes i hear sometimes negativity is you know what i find this might be a common thing i don't know how common this is but as the and maybe i guess i guess it's a sensitive subject because it is it is a real thing though i'll see a guy who's dating a girl and they're like at the start of their transformation and then you know, maybe it's like, it's a big transformation. Maybe she's like eight months later. And now all of a sudden she's, she wasn't as confident. And now she's taking pictures and like more, you know, showing more skin, wearing a sports bra to the gym, getting more attention, um, posting more different people are following her now. Cause it's like a, you know, she's doing a fitness journey. Now she's a bikini competitor and she's, you know, she looks awesome. You know, she looks great. And, um, I think that sometimes the boyfriend, is like feels like he might be like losing the girl mm-hmm. or feel like he's just not as confident and now she's super confident and she's changing type of thing or he is a fear of losing her and so he gets this is this, this like jealousy starts happening um which turns into like kind of like a control of like hey you shouldn't do this anymore type of thing so i mean i don't think you've experienced that but it's something that i've seen you yeah. know i've seen it happen multiple times um that's a hard one right that is you know that is tough um, and I'm sure that, um, the, the guy would make the girl feel like it's something she's doing wrong. Like maybe makes her feel weird. Like, oh, you've changed You're a changed person. But in reality, I think that's an issue with the, well, I guess it could be a girl or a guy, but in this, um, little metaphor that you gave or whatever scenario, yeah. um, you, 
you mentioned that it was a guy. So we'll just use that. Um, so it's probably, you know, more of a, an issue with the guy and not necessarily the girl. I don't think the girl should feel bad about it. Like, right. you know what I mean? And I think like this is, uh, you know, it's easier said than done. Every relationship is different, but you know, I think there's like a point you have to come to in your life and ask yourself what makes you happy and why, why not do what you love if it's not hurting anybody? Don't, don't let anybody like convince you otherwise. Like, you know, and I get it, it can be difficult. Like, but I think like, it's, you gotta set boundaries. Like, you know, yeah. It, and you might be surprised <laughs> setting boundaries, even from the beginning does wonders, but, um, you know, it's, it is tricky. And I do understand what you're, you're talking about for sure. Yeah. It's a common, it's a common thing. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say it's like extremely common, but I've seen it happen multiple times. And sometimes I'll have girls like pull out a prep from it, which, you know, it that's sucks. So There's so much a coach can say about that. It's not really my area, you know, but yeah, no, I've seen it happen. And so it's a sad thing, especially when the girl's doing good and she's like, yeah. And it, sometimes I like, it's like a husband thing. And I'm like, well, yeah. I'm not, that's none. I have no right. To yeah. Say anything here, so Here's the to. thing too. is like, well, another, I guess, issue, what it could be. And I guess this would be the only mm, reasonable issue is like, oh, if it's a money thing, like, oh, you're spending all this money competing and we're already like not, you know, I could see that well. one. So that one is like a reasonable, like yeah. if it's a money thing, mm. but if it's something that's like, Hey, somebody wants to do it cause they love it and they want to be healthy and, you know, give it a go. Like, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know what I see too, which is really cool. I see the other side of it too, which is fun. Cause there's, there's polar, polar ends of this. We we're talking a lot about the polar, 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 bear, polar. Yeah. Look at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the other end of it is sometimes I'll see, um, a wife start doing it. Right. And, um, you know, and the husband will be like super supportive and then she starts cooking better at home. And then the next thing, you know, like six months, nine months from now, the guy will email me and he wants to do it with his wife. Right. Oh, I love that. It's so cool when that happens. And yeah. then they turn to this like supportive boyfriend and then, the, and then it like turns into this whole other thing and they're going to the gym together and it like strengthens the relationship versus hurting the relationship. And I guess it's just the perspective of the guy and the guy's at like every show and he's there, he's like. I have a guy in uh, in Austria right now, and he like sends me his wife's videos and stuff of her working out. And he's like so supportive, and it's like it's so cool. He's flying her out to Vegas for like a month Aww. to come out for the Olympia and stuff. That's and cute. yeah, no, I'm like, this, I wish there was more of that, right? I wish there was more like supportive dudes who are like, you know, I want her to be the best mm -hmm. she can be. I think that's super cool. I see that a lot though. I see yeah. so many like husbands that are like so excited to see their wife compete or whatever. I love seeing that. Yeah. They get like really like excited for them. It's cool, right? Yeah. 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 I just, I love that. That is so cool. Well, you remember uh, Max had that Phoebe shirt. That was so cute. Yeah, that's adorable. <laughs> he had a shirt of Phoebe. that's what I'm he talking surprised about. Her. That was, he's, he wins some boyfriend awards for yeah, sure. Yeah, that is adorable. He's super cool I about that. Yeah. That. But yeah, no, that's cool. It's, and it's, as I think that's the same with like any, any career though, right? As you're working and as you put your priorities right too. And I think that the, where the, 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 the career person's, um, or the, you know, the athlete career person, same thing. They have to just make their sure their priorities are right too. <laughs> Cause I got this, I mean, prepping and stuff as a coach got m my way a lot too of relationship. Cause I always put everything like competing and all that stuff first. Right. And that was probably more my issue. I, I clearly put it first. <laughs> like it was always clearly like, it was like team elite. And then like any relationship was like <laughs> next, but like way down, <laughs> way down the path. So that's, I think it's something you have to learn too. Cause if you're doing that as a competitor and the, the, the boyfriend feels that way, yeah, that's not a course. good, that's not a good feeling either. Right. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that is something the competitor has to be aware of. Like, you know, don't forget to give attention to yeah. your significant other. You know, yeah. it's important too. Cause it can get, maybe get them involved, you know, be like, Hey, you know, come to my show. Let's, you know, do this together or whatever. You know, I think that's great. Um, great to see. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because it can consume you. It's yeah. it, it gets you. You know, it gets totally. you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, what? A, so anyway, as as a competitor now outside of the relationship, you're dealing with negativity all the time. Yeah. I um, mean, it's kind of motivating sometimes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You gotta, you know, you gotta learn to deal with it whatever way you can. You can literally turn the negativity into some motivation. Yeah. I've done that so many times. Yeah, it's funny. It's so funny because you I just love it. What I love about what I love is that you stay in your own lane <laughs> yeah. so much. But people still try to people get in my lane and I have to be like, yo, move out of my lane. Yeah. This is my lane. Yeah, fun, the funniest part of that, because it's so funny because it's like historic now, right? Like everyone always brings it up wherever we go. You know, I think she should. I'm like, dude, that was years ago at this point, like two years ago. But it's funny because it's been so long since people were like, 
mad at you for competing. Oh, I still get, I still get it sometimes. Well, what's funny is two of the main people who were doing that, I'm not going to say any names, both competed after they were Olympia qualified and won another show. So well, like, seems kind of hypocritical hmm, Seems to a me. little hypocritical to be yeah. doing exactly what they were telling you not to do. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that, that's just so didn't funny. Didn't age well, didn't age well. That didn't age well at all. Like, Ashley, don't complete because you're, Olympia qualified and you're taking away Olympia spots, but I'm going to compete after I'm Olympia qualified and take away Olympia. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You guys can look it up. <laughs> that's, Who knows? That's, I, I, yeah. It's okay for you, but not for, it's okay for me, but not for you. That's yeah, so funny. Just, isn't that funny how the world works? You know? <laughs> but I mean, honestly, if you, if you, you've got to be so secure with yourself though, but there are ways you can turn that negativity into some motivation. I do that every time. I'm like, oh, yeah, tell me not to compete. Please keep it coming. Yeah. <laughs> I want to compete twice as much now. You know, I love it. I love it. You know, That's I, you just got to like brush it off and be like, you know, as long as you know you're in the right and you don't feel guilty about it. Like, you know, I'm just doing my thing, living my best life out here. No one's going to tell me otherwise. Yeah, so. that, that's the same. It actually works the same for me, too. So I guess you could go as in it could beat you up and you can like let it grow or you can fight back against it like you did with the the bike guy today. <laughs> That's your instinct, right? But that happened. Okay, honestly, the negativity is a big reason for my success. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the story because a lot of people don't know the story. But negativity was a big reason for my success. When I first moved to Colorado from California, um, you know, it was a different scenario for coaches out there. And it was back when, like, you know, like Facebook was huge, right? And back then there was like, I don't even think there was an Instagram at that point. Or it was just starting. And um, I was I was prepping people, and I was new, and everyone was like, who's this guy in Colorado, right? And it was all very local back then. There wasn't anyone really doing anything online. The only thing we're doing online is, like, Facebook and stuff, and you'd get people from, like, maybe 30 minutes away versus your own gym, and that was kind of the growth at that point. It wasn't, like, worldwide. And um, I started posting what I was posting in, like, California, too. And I was posting, you know, I this client had, whatever, 30 minutes of cardio and – 1800 calories 1600 calories in the show right and I started posting like all these things about their calories but it was it was the culture in Colorado was a lot different the culture in Colorado was you know two hours of cardio you know 800 calories this type of thing and then the coaches were like who's this guy you know coming out here and like saying that he's doing this and he's lying clearly lying because his girls are winning so there's no way he's doing this so like they all kind of like got together and started like making fun of me doing it and they were like and I'm like I didn't know it was going to turn into this whole thing, but they were like making fun of me because I was putting all this precision in my nutrition. Like this client ate X amount of calories, this much cardio, whatever. And I, I put all the thing out there and it started making mad. So I started putting it out there more. And then they were all making fun of me. They're like, oh, today my client had like 3,266.3, like making all these funny comments. I'm like, oh, those calories, like, like making fun of me for talking about calories. I'm like, we should be talking about calories. You're a coach, right? Right. And so I was like, okay, guys. And then I put out this post. I'm like, because you guys are hating on me so hard and you think that I'm lying, I'm going to put every client, I'm going to put their name, I'm going to put their entire diet for the rest of the year, I'm going to post it, their calories, and I'm going to beat you with more calories and less cardio, and you're not going to, and you're not going to be able to figure it out, and, and you're going to, you can ask them directly if I did that or not, because you guys are saying that I'm not. So I started putting it out there more and more and more, right? And I was like winning with more calories and less cardio, and we're winning at like, you know, pretty, pretty high rate. And I was like, you can't do what I do. Like, you physically can't. You don't know how to do what I do. You know, like, you could try, but you're going to lose, you know? And so right. I, it turned me into this, like, really aggressive monster. It actually, like, gets my juices flowing now, like, even yeah. talking about it. Because I'm like, I remember those moments. Because I would go to the, because, you know, you went from this, like, group of guys that were all there for years and whatever. And then this new guy comes in from California. He just starts tearing it up. And then he's like, oh, I'm doing it with more calories than you. And I'm winning at an astronomical rate. Like, we were killing it when we first got there. And, um. And it was, you know, it was threatening. So they were, like, teaming up to, like, put me down, right? And I was like, no, that's not how this is going to mm -hmm. work. Like, I'm going to fight, you know? Yeah. And so I put it out there. Like, I just kept constantly putting it out there. And eventually they just shut up, and we kept growing. And then their, what was really funny was their clients were like, wait, how come I can't – how come I'm doing two hours of cardio? Like, they were asking their trainers, how come I'm doing two hours of cardio? Because Adam's girls aren't doing that, and they're winning. So why do I need to do it and his don't? And he's like, oh, it's not – 
not true. And then they're, they're like, no, I think it's true because he's posting all their names too. And I can contact them. Like they go to my gym. <laughs> like, like I think it's true. And so it started turning into this whole, so like sometimes a negativity can turn into a real positive. Right. And that's when we started really growing with that. I was like, thanks guys for like, cause I wouldn't have ever done that before. Right, totally. I wouldn't have gone so hard with it, you know? And I think the key there is in, in this, this recipe only works if you never back down. If you know you're in the right, don't yeah. back down. Don't apologize. Like, you're going to get a thick skin from that and just just use it like as motivation like huh, okay well let's yeah. do it then you know i think it, it's like a personality thing that you have to discover like you can't apologize and back down for every little thing if you are not wrong you know don't apologize if you're not wrong yeah. don't back down if you're not wrong it's like you know i think that's what that's you know you got to show like hey you know i'm standing my ground here yeah and the only important. way to deal with the bullies exactly. punch them back you know, you're, otherwise you're just going to keep getting bullied. Metaphorically. You know? <laughs> I would say do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I dealt with my bullies. <laughs> I got beat up a few times, but I never got bullied bullied. You know what I mean? Because you yeah. like, you just got to take it. At least you fight back. Yeah. No. <laughs> so. I, I do not recommend that. No. Part. Okay. Um, <laughs> I do not. I was, Honestly, I was, if they're, if they're. They're hitting you first, then yeah. yes, yes, that's that's funny. <laughs> that's I can't how, picture bikini girls doing no, that. No, no, no. But it metaphor now it's all social. Girls are meaner on social than guys are oh, yeah. to each other for sure. Oh gosh, yeah. Why is that? You know, it's but girls are because this is what they do. They're so nice to you at at the show backstage. They're so nice to you, and then you'll have some of them that will just air out their frustrations on social media and be like, oh, okay, well. <laughs> All right, I see how this works now. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, uh, I take it with a grain of salt, but like you know, you just, you just gotta be aware. Oh no, don't <laughs> pour me. Pour <laughs> everyone else. It's so funny though because you do stay. You don't say anything. I don't. You I just don't stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's you just stay in your. But lane. when it comes to me, I, st I stand up for myself. Like yeah. I'm, that's the only thing I will say. I do like I'm not gonna get walked all over. Yeah, that's for sure. Just that's like great. the bike. But yeah. <laughs> That's great. It is funny though. It's when trouble just, comes my way. What's funny though <laughs> is that your your Instagram is very like just you doing fitness. Yeah. Like there's nothing besides that. Like yeah. it's just you. It's not like like personal grievances or anything like right. that. Right. Like I don't. Just, I don't get too ranty on there. Yeah. It's just you doing fitness. You know. It's mm. it's that's what it is. It's funny. And then still people will come. It's just which yeah. I guess it just it just shows you. You know. Like it doesn't matter what you put out there. It's gonna come. Oh like, yeah. I mean a, yeah. And, and in real life too, but like as you, like you mentioned, girls tend to be more like I'll do it behind your back kind of thing. Yeah. Um, whereas guys are more like up front to your face. It seems. It seems to me. You know what I mean? I wish girls were more up to my like say that to my face <laughs> backstage. <laughs> go ahead, tell me. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting. Tell me. Don't go. Don't go on social media and tell me that. Yeah. In a in the comments section. Yeah, it's Shoot. funny. But yeah, that, you know, it is a little disappointing though, because you know, not that I ever assume people are my friends, but it's like, oh, okay, you're friendly with this person, you you're acquaintances, but you get along, and then next thing you know, they're saying something on their YouTube vlog or something like that. You know, just. It turns it, and and at that point, I'm just like, okay, you don't exist to me anymore. Just yeah, that's kind of how you deal with it. I think it's a I, smart way too. That's how I deal with it too. You I'm don't like, exist to me. Like I wasn't <laughs> like if I'm not benefiting from the relate. That's a, that's the thing I think people. I think that's a, another part people p struggle with. To be honest with, I think is everyone wants to be a people pleaser. Everyone wants to be liked by by everyone. You know, I think just naturally we want that. Mm -hmm. And um, there'll be someone who's not significant in your life to you in any capacity. And they'll say something and they'll still try to like appease them and become friends with them or right. something. And I'm like, dude, they Why? weren't contributing to your life at all right. in any capacity. Just write them off. Just be yeah, done. Exactly. Don't even, person. don't waste the energy. Yeah. You're like, who, who are you? I'm not wasting my energy on you. That's just, just have a, like, you don't exist to me kind of attitude. Yeah. I, that's how it, it works for me. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I didn't like, really know you before. So I don't really need to like, we don't. I don't, we don't need to hash it out because I didn't even know who you were yeah. before. So why do I care to hash it out, anything out with you? Just, just stay. Like it doesn't change your life yeah. either way. The only way it changes your life if it let you get, if it, if you let it get to you and you appease them and you, you know. Yeah. And I think that's just a natural instinct stuff. for people is they want, they want everyone to like them instead of, I think maybe we take a more of a, a realistic approach to it. We're like, Hey, we know that not everyone's going to like Oh us. yeah. I it's already just, know a lot of people just, don't. <laughs> And it's yeah. okay if I have a few people that respect me and like they're like, yeah, I, I can vibe with that. Then that's all that matters. You know, you got to expect it. I don't. Yeah. That's why I always say people like you a lot more than they like me because <laughs> like, <laughs> you're more more friendly up front. But like, I, I you know, you just say it comes with the territory. Like you said, just expect it. 
um, you can't please everyone. And, you know, you do, like, if it's a friend and family, you know, you definitely give them the explanation and tell them how you feel, of course. Don't don't ever just write them off right away. If it's somebody that you're close to in real life, um, but, you know, set your boundaries and be like, no, I'm doing this for me and I love it. Yeah. So stop making me feel like an alien for, you know, eating healthy and working out. Like, I hate that too, you know? Yeah. I hate that. I hate when people will make your, they'll make you feel like your lifestyle is less, enjoyable because you are prepping or dieting or working out and it's like who are you to say like how how much do I have in my life in comparison to yours like as if your life is more fulfilling or something yeah. like you have a better life because you don't do that but it's like okay so what's the exciting part about your life it's like okay so you have a normal person job which you know is fine okay you have kids cool um and what else <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I don't go out to eat on the weekends, but I get to travel the world. I get to do what I love. I get to live my best life. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hate when people try to do that. I hate it. Like, don't you have something else going on in your life besides competing? Like, don't you just want to, like, relax and be normal? And don't you want to have, like, kids like <laughs> like I do? You know? <laughs> like, uh. I'm fine. It Don't a, worry. It is a natural thing, I think, right? So, like, some people just, what they're doing, they feel that's that's actually normal. Uh, yeah, I think like going has out like on weekends set. for pizza and stuff. Yeah, sure, that's normal. I think okay, everyone's but normal is... Why do I want to be yeah. normal? I want to be extraordinary. Yeah. F normal. That sounds boring. Yeah. That's boring. <laughs> but I think it's like, it's, it's a natural thing where everyone thinks that their normal should be standard, right? Yeah. And so anything that's outside of their normal to them is foreign and then therefore less less correct. Right. Right. Which is, you know, it's a, it's, I think people who are saying that need to evaluate themselves, too, because that's a pretty egotistical thing to say. This is the right way. Yeah. And they'll, I mean? they'll kind of pitch it to you as if they're being nice about it, too. And maybe yeah. they have some good intentions, but it's a very well, it's kind of rude. You know, it's like yeah. maybe unintentionally very rude to be like, don't you just want to, like, not compete sometimes and like live the life I do. Yeah, because you live such an exciting life. Okay. <laughs> sure. yeah. I promise you, uh, for lifestyles, mine's pretty darn exciting, I would say. Yeah. And I get the, I get, you know what makes my life really exciting too is I get to choose. It's on my, no one's forcing me to do anything. If I want to compete this weekend and go somewhere crazy, if I wanted to go to Korea this week or next week to compete and just decide to do it, I can do that. I have I have the, the means necessary. I got... I don't have any anybody holding me back. I don't have. I'm a, I'm a free bird. Yeah, I can do whatever I want, and that's a great feeling. It must be right. Yeah, yeah even with the job I have here, yeah. you know, I do it on my own time. Yeah, so it's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice. I like it. Yeah, same thing. It's just it's nice. Yeah, it is. You it's can nice. be spontaneous. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to you too. You know. Yeah, I'm going to Texas uh, in a couple of days. You're yeah. your own boss, so like yeah. I do. I like it. Yeah, you you <laughs> yes, can call I'm, the shot. I can, but yeah, but you know, what's funny is when you're when you're the uh, your your own boss, you just you're basically uh, everyone else's. How's it turn? How's it turn? Like when you work for someone, you just work for one person. But when you have people under you, you work for all of them. That's how it kind of goes. But but it's a responsibility that I love. I yeah. love it. I actually really like it. It's fun. Yeah. I have a good I'm time. I'm glad that you like it. No, it's a good time. It's a really good time. It is a good time. Yeah. <laughs> kind of <laughs> having fun in life, aren't we? This is pretty cool. Yeah, we could do what we want. You know, I think that the problem that the the end result of us not caving into everyone saying we're doing too much. Because I've had that too, you know, in my with my work, with relationships especially, where it's like, Oh, you do you work too much. Why do you need to work so much? Like you already have everything you need, you don't need anymore. Why do you keep pushing it? And like and I guess people could say that same exact thing to you, you know? Oh, yeah. And I've had that and obviously ended that ended relationships because of it. But, um, you know, I could have been like, okay, you're right. Let's just slow down. And then you down. slacked off on your work and then you wouldn't be where you are now, you know? Yeah, and I love where I'm at right now. So I think that dealing with the negativity and, and like fighting for what you want to do, whether it's, you know, your right or just your idea, your dream you're chasing, yeah. um, that you got to fight for that, you know? Exactly. And, and people will try to make you sound like you're selfish and it's like it's a funny word to navigate around because it's like heck yeah I'm gonna do what I want Psh, heck yeah. yeah I mean I, it, yeah <laughs> does that make me selfish I don't know that doesn't mean that I'm like I, I let down the people that I love that's not the case but I definitely 
I call the shots in my life, you yeah. know, and I don't think that should be taken as a negative thing. Like so selfish. No, it just makes you a free thinker, yeah. non-conforming, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and I, I, that's who, those are the, the people who are non-conforming are the people who do the great things in the world. That's right. just always how it is, you know? Yeah. The people that everyone says is crazy or a little weird or a little this, you know, because they're not conforming to everything else, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and those words, you know, they're created to bring someone down. You oh, know? yeah, like the word obsessed. You're obsessed. Yeah, obsessed. Is that a bad thing or a good thing? Weird. I mean, think, <laughs> think of the word like nerd and geek, right? It's yeah. just because someone's, someone is not confident because you're smarter than them so they came up with a derogatory term to ah, make you that's a feel good point. yeah those words don't get in those words don't get created without jealousy right mm. like if someone's way smarter than me like oh he's a nerd well that's a way for me to just completely dismiss that guy for being superior in intelligence right what is the fitness version of a nerd someone we should think of it or ask the audience you know what they it can is? think of it i could tell you what it is it's it's some hater saying seeing a big guy who's not as big and being like, oh, steroids. Oh. That's what it is. It's the same thing as me saying someone who's superior in intelligence to me is a nerd, right? And me like diminishing that. Yeah. Because I'm diminishing that kid's hard work That's of true. studying, of, of learning, and really being invested into his education. And the same thing with this bodybuilder who's been working really hard, eating properly, all this. I can just diminish it by saying, oh, steroids. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I'm jealous that I don't look as good as him. Yeah. Right? And, and really, f- I just didn't put in the work like he did. Yeah. And for girls, it will be something like, Butt implants. Yep. I've, I've even gotten ab implants before. I'm like, ab implants. Those look terrible. Have you seen Are you those? kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's a stretch. But it's almost like one of those things. It's like, it's like a compliment in disguise. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, well, I, I definitely didn't get any butt implants. But if you thought I did, I just saved myself probably $15,000 and a whole lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> How does that work when girls get butt implants? I, you know, you, I will say you can definitely tell. If a competitor had it, you could tell. You can't hide it on stage. No, I don't think lean. that's, yeah, because your glute and hamstring tying would be so, it has to get so lean, right, that you would be able to see where it starts and stops, and it would distort the shape completely. So butt implant would work for somebody that's like maybe more normal percentage of body fat, but definitely not for a competitor. You would be able to tell right away. Yeah. You know? Have you seen those uh, those ab implants that yeah, came out a few bad. years ago? Yeah, they haven't, at least they haven't improved if they've. Well, I've only seen them when they first came out. That was a few years ago. If you guys want to Google like ab implants, um, it's pretty, pretty it is, obvious. It is, yeah, because they'll be kind of like soft, except for their abs are just like rock hard and they just look like blocks. Yeah, the shape doesn't change. Like yeah, they, it's, um, they're very overly symmetrical, I would say. Yeah. Very, like overly symmetrical. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, um, along with along with that, you know what's funny? I'm grabbing this like, if you guys were wondering why I'm grabbing this cup like a, like, like monkey pawing this guy because they gave me the straw. It's way too small. It's like, oh. why is he put his hands all in his drink? <laughs> um, along along with like the negativity, I think that the people understand is that the, the higher you climb, the more people are going to try to pull you down to their level. And I think that that's the important takeaway of this is that the fitness thing is really intimidating to a lot of people. You know, when you're reaching this high level of fitness, it's really intimidating to a lot of people because people want to get fit and they don't want to put in the work though. You know, if you're a trainer, you're going to go, Every dinner you go to for like the rest of your lives where it's with regular people, if you're going to like a a friend's dinner or or whatever, like every dinner for the rest of your life, if you're a known trainer, it's always going to be like, oh, I got, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds. How do I do that? Right. And you can do the same dinner with the same person every six months and they'll still never lose those 10 pounds (laughs) because like everyone struggles with it and everyone wants to know the magic pill and everyone wants to know, everyone wants to fix it but very few people will actually do what it takes to fix it. That's the thing. It's the same. It always, it's the same answer, you know, eat, move more, eat less. That's it. (laughs) That's, that's the answer. And the, when people start seeing you reach this super high level, there's something, there's something that happens in themselves. Just like me calling on someone, a geek or a nerd to like say, Oh, well he's doing better than me in school and me. Like it makes it kind of, I don't know, makes me feel better about myself to kind of Mm -hmm. bring that person down. Right. Right. By saying that which I don't do, but as an example, um, the same thing kind of happens when you start getting super fit. Oh, well, she's obsessed. Oh, well, she, that's all she, I could do that too. It's, that's all I cared about, but I have a family, but I have a whatever. I have a career. I have a this, or I have a that, right? And so it's almost like how you're saying, like it's almost like a compliment. I think there's just, just changing your perspective on those things and um, changing your perspective on why they're saying it, you know? It, and it's actually, when I hear it I'm like it's kind of sad because now that I, I know that that person's struggling you know it's not mm-hmm. it's a it comes from a sad place it comes from a se- place of self-doubt it comes from a from a place of you know them making themselves feel more confident by bringing you down 
And it's like, you know, instead of, instead of like going on the journey with you and actually finding within themselves to, to take that steps to be better and to, to be as fit as they actually want to be. So it's kind of a, a sad thing, but I think if you take it the right way, like if you think about what's really going on there and you dive into it and you're like, okay, why is this person saying I need to do this? Oh, because they have some self doubt because they have this problem. They've been trying to lose weight for whatever. So it makes them feel better about it and you just write it off. And then if it gets too crazy, you block them, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the, just a perspective on how you look at things is the way to do it. And it, I went through that a lot when I was, you know, just as a coach, when I'd have other coaches, because this is what we always, I run into that all the time. I mean, you know, in the fitness, in my sector of fitness industry, there's just a small sector, bikini fitness, bodybuilding industry, right? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty known in that area, right? So you get haters in there all the time. And it's never like the successful coaches, which is really funny. All my friends that are like successful coaches, like I hang out with them. I go to dinner with them. We go to shows together. We sit together. We help each other out. Like, what do you think about this girl? Like, it's like a, it's like a, like we have no jealousy, you know, we have, you know, clients will leave them, come to me. Clients will leave me, go to them sometimes. Like it just happens. It's just part of it. You know, we don't, it's like, there's no animosity. Like, it's just, mm -hmm. we're just friends. We're just cool. Like we're both doing the same things. Right. But the ones that are like coming up, the ones that are like just starting, those are the ones that always just are throwing shade at all the guys that are successful. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Because you're going to be there one day. If you just, you just show that you can do it. If you just put out the athletes and you start performing on a high level, you'll be at a high level. You just have to perform at a high level. That's the only way to get there, though. But you don't get there by bringing someone down. Mm -hmm. You know, I have people. It was funny. You'll just have it. It's just the way it is when you get bigger and more known. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have, like, <clears throat> coaches that have, like, never seen my plans. or for like, oh, they just use templates and this. I'm like, no, dude, there's, like, like, it's, like, they'll just come up with stuff. You right. know what I mean? And it's, like, they're always going to try to bring you down. And it's just, it, it is funny because it, it'll be people that have never even seen your stuff before. But they just come up with, like, what would just make sense? They'd have to do that, right? And I'm, like. Like, no, we got like 11 coaches all doing individual plans. Like it's, it's a, it's, we have to have like 12,000 plans in our system. I looked the other day. It's so crazy. But like, that'll be a common thing. That always happens to the bigger coaches. Oh, they use templates. And I'm like, dude, most of those guys don't like almost like my friends that do it, the, the, the big guys that they're not, you know? So it's, it's like, it, but it's an easy thing to say. It's just like me being like, oh, hey, oh well, yeah, steroids. That's how, that's why they're winning. You know what I mean? And it's like, no, dude, they've, they've, they got years in on you. Like you're going right. to get that good eventually. And if you're seeing someone in that kind of, you kind of say that to yourself, like, you know, when I was younger, I would do that. I would see a guy that was better than me or bigger than me. Oh, he probably does more juice than me or whatever, right? Or something like that, you know? And it's like this, it's like an easy go-to and it's just something in yourself that you have to like overcome and find, you know? Right. And I think that it's, I don't know what it is about, what it is about bodybuilding, but I feel like it's such, such a, it's such a exposing it just exposes your weaknesses of yourself so much when, because it's visual, you know, it's like that person has physic, like you can visually see that person has a better body than you. That's a pretty hard thing to take in, you know, intelligence, you can't really, can't really quantify, you know, mm -hmm. like success in the world. You can't really, it's hard to quantify like who's more successful and like, you know what I mean? Cause there's just right. so many different versions of it, but body wise, you're like, Oh no, that person clearly, <laughs> They beat me in a body competition. That's pretty rough, right. right? It's like that person has a better body than me, factually, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, and it's like, oh, well, that it's hard. And especially when you're on the outside, like anyone who's on stage has a great body. And they're the top, top, you know, 0.001% of the world. I think anyone should, everyone should celebrate that, even if you do get beat. But when you're talking like regular friends versus you, and you got a six pack and a booty and, and just look like you're walking in a fitness magazine, Right. Like, that's pretty intimidating. That's pretty, you find, you know, you find, those people are going to find their insecurities with that really quickly. Because it's a very vulnerable, very vulnerable thing, I think. So, I think that brings out the, like, the, the, the instant, like, fire back, bring them down to make me feel better, like, instinct that, that, that I think humans just have. I don't know. Do I go too deep into that? No, I think that was great. That was very well said. And it makes a lot of sense, you know. I think, like... And, and it doesn't even necessarily have to translate like into because they're jealous because they want that exact body, but they're accomplishing something that, um, you know, they're doing something with their lives, right? They're, they've got big goals, a lot of ambition. They're going somewhere. Whereas maybe the other person has no desire to look like that, but they can't get anywhere in life. They're just like stagnant or just not happy, you know? So it can also be one of those things too. But I do agree that it, in some form, it is a, um, what is it? Like a, what do you call it? A reflection? The, yeah. Um, like some, like it's a, a, I don't know, self-reflection or something. No, it's, 
where you're putting your insecurity on somebody else. I can't remember the word. Oh, I just, you know, it's funny now. For, I know the word that you're and saying. Yeah, Arthur, you got it? Projection. 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 <laughs> Yay. Thank God for Arthur. Yes. Arthur's Projection. I'm going to call Arthur a nerd to make myself feel better. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's smarter than me. Oh, goodness. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. So, I mean, in some way, shape, or form, it is a projection. Although, maybe they don't necessarily want to look just like that. Or maybe they have no desire to even, you know, get a good body or compete. There's something that you're doing that they're, you know, envious of. They're just maybe just stuck in life and sucks. Sucks for them. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> and it's, and I've, uh, gosh, you know what? The being stuck in life thing, it's a weird thing to me. I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just me because we're, I don't think you'd ever get stuck in life. I don't think I would get, I, I just, it's funny because I was actually, I was actually talking to Paul about this. Either. He's like, if you took everything away from me right now, he's like, I would be here again in a year. Mm -hmm. Like, like, you know, and it's like, it's just about hard work, you know, about like sticking to a goal and like making a positive change in your life that other people are going to be intimidated by sometimes that are close to you because you're moving and they're not, you know, they're on a treadmill and you jumped off, you know? And so, um, and I think that with fitness, that's a, one of a really, it's a really visual intimidating one because it's visual, you know what I mean? It's like, on display, you know? Yeah. If I'm like, oh, I'm working hard every day and I'm grinding and I'm going to make my, you know, my I'm going to be better at work. I'm going to make my company better, whatever. Like, you don't see that, you know, you do, it's not like a visual thing. Right. But body wise, you're like putting, putting your pictures up or whatever on your Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever, like, oh, progressing, progressing again. And people are like, you know, they're getting farther and farther behind. I think that it just brings out something in us that it's like, you know, it's intimidating and you're changing too at the same thing. You're also, you're changing and maybe they think that they're losing you as a friend or losing you as family because you're, you're going down a different path now, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, don't let anyone steer you off that path right. for sure. It's super exactly. important. I mean, I've had, I mean, you could impact the world so much. You know, people don't understand the fitness. And I get too deep into it. I think sometimes, maybe that's the mood now. I mean, my coffee is, I'm not, I've, I'm, I've been decaffeined. I'm like, uh, it takes so long for this caffeine to kick in. It's already out of me. <laughs> but like, like you could impact the world so much through different ways that we never thought possible, right? Like how many times have you heard, I started my fitness journey and started competing because of you. I didn't even know about competing because of you. Because I yeah. started following your Instagram or YouTube or whatever, right? It's it's like, I love hearing that too. Because it's like, oh, it's like the best compliment. Yeah. Really. You know, you can compliment my booty all day. But if you <laughs> tell me that I motivated you to start, like, eating better or working out, that means a lot more to me than complimenting my butt cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had I've had it happen where, um, where someone... I had a few times where people came up to me and they're like, yeah, I couldn't afford to do a prep with a coach, but I just followed all your stuff and I kind of did my own thing and, and it really helped me and really helped me get here. And like, it, you know, so it's like, it's a rewarding feeling, you know, and without the push from the positive people in your life, like, you know, I try to be up as much as I can on this stuff, but you push me sometimes to do these things, you know, like you make sure that every Monday we're doing these podcasts, like, you know, can't miss one. It's like, a, it's in, and you, you'll push me to do like content and teach me about that stuff too. You're like, no, you got to keep it out there. You've done that before. I mean, now I'm just like, now it's just like a machine. We just do it. And now you have Arthur. And I have Arthur. <laughs> Arthur came in here today too and told me that. He's like, we got to shoot this video today, Adam, because I'm leaving. He's like, we got to shoot it. Like, no matter, I'm just going to pull you aside. We're going to shoot it. Right. So, like, but it's, the, but look at who we've surrounded ourselves with now, right? The mm -hmm. positive people who make us better, right? Who are That's like saying, these are the things that are, and so it just it, versus the people I had in my life before, you know, um, when I, and that's the thing, when I, to get this to be where it is now, like I've told everyone the story, I had to sell everything that I had. I had to sell my house. I had to sell everything to get a gym that I didn't even know if it was going to work. Right. And I had to sell, I had to sell everything. But the relationship I was in before that, the, the girl was so content with what we had, you know, because at that point I had my house paid off. I don't know. I was like 34 or something. And I had my house paid off. I had everything set. Like most people were like, that's the dream right there. Right. Which was the dream at the time. And then the only money I had, though, that was, like, enough to buy a gym was the house. I was like, well, I got to get rid of this. It, but to me, it was a no-brainer. It, like, didn't even – it wasn't even a question if that was the right move. I was just like, oh, that's the only money I have. Okay, get rid of that. I don't care where I live, right? Like, so – but that was, you know, without putting the right people in my life, I wouldn't have been able to do that, and then it wouldn't be here. You know, we wouldn't be – we wouldn't be here, you know? So, like, now I'm in, now we're impacting people all over the world with this podcast and we have people saying, oh, I started my prep because of, of you and I started, you know, started doing the, I, I did my own coaching because I was watching your videos and learned a lot from you. Like, it's so much more than me just being selfish and having a house. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, to me, it's like not even a question. Like, it just makes sense. Like, I can impact whatever, thousands of people or I can have my house and my security and live in my little 
easy life that's mm-hmm. already set, right? So, I mean, it just makes sense to me. I don't know. But I think that having the right people in your life and, like, understanding what you're trying to do and really focusing on your goals and really, like, nurturing them and holding on to them with, you know, I guess extreme vigor, right? We're, like, holding on to these goals, right? Like, exactly. you're not going to – you're not – you're not going to derail me from this is like right. been a key to the, to the success of that. Set the boundaries. Yeah. Yep. You know, accept it or not. But I think that's important. And hopefully everyone, um, you know, can ha- can walk away from this podcast with a little better feeling knowing that like, you know, I, don't, don't feel guilty about doing what you love, no matter who tries to tell you otherwise. And although some people might be coming from a good place, like you're, family for example like you know you just got to tell them what's up yeah and um you know i think that you know communication is key it's a very uh <laughs> cliche term but communication is key you know you tell them what's up like this is what i'm doing and i love it and um here's why so yeah so anyway with that guys we're we're on um we're still live on instagram and on youtube Oh, no, not live on YouTube. We're live on Instagram. But if you guys have any questions. And we're live in real life, too. We're live. I'm I'm a real person. Just a real person. And so is Adam. Yes. Um, So if you have any questions you guys have on uh, Instagram, YouTube, we're happy to answer them. But um, but I guess with that, we're kind of signing out here. We're signing out. out. (sighs) Save the polar bears. Save the (laughs) polar bears. You can't see them. I don't. I feel like you can't. They're so cute. They are cute. But I feel like they should be just. I feel like them saving themselves is an easier solution and them just taking a step back by 100 yards and realizing that there's still ice there is uh, is the way to go. <laughs> I don't see anyone going out there and, like, rescuing them. They're just going to make their life harder. But, uh, you know, give them 100 bucks, see what they do. I don't know. <laughs> like, give me, that's a, the biggest scam ever, right? Give me 100 bucks and I'll save the world. Like, I'll, like, I'll, dump I'll, ice I'll, cubes and give, like, ship some ice cubes. Give me a hundred bucks and I'll change, I'll change the climate. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. come on now. <laughs> I wonder what they do with all that money. Dude, it's not, they're not, I mean, well, it's funny. It's just funny, but it's good. That goes into a whole other, it's a whole other topic, but like, <laughs> but I mean, you'd have to control every country, every, I'm not going to go into it, but anyway, right. <laughs> we'll leave it alone. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll talk polar bears later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>